when I first got into this and realized that virtually all of the so-called pro audio gear that would show up in broadcast plants was impedance matched. That was done for a very good reason because they were interfacing with telephone lines. And also, most of it at, at, in the early 60s or late 50s, early 60s was vacuum tube, where in order to get vacuum tube circuitry to talk to transmission lines of any length, you had to use input and output transformers to bump the impedance up and down. And you had to match the impedances in order to keep the transformers happy. It was more a, a matter of that than uh, subscribing to some power exchange of, of hands theory. All of that was what you needed to do in a telephone context when you had very long lines that were truly transmission lines. And you were then you worried about the exchange of power. But in a studio where the longest line might be 50 feet, the idea of of handing milliwatts around the room was really sort of absurd. And if you looked at even the hardware of the day, you would have a, a console with a line amplifier that could deliver plus 30 into 600 ohms, but in fact it's feeding a 100K pot on the front end of an Ampex tape machine. If you try to characterize the way that system works in terms of power transfer from the console to the tape machine. You were looking at, you know, numbers where femtowatts were big numbers. It just became absurd. What really counted was when the power supply rails were exceeded by the swing of the, of the signal, at which point you went into hard clipping. So I never really bought into the power matched hardware design thing, although both of the A and R consoles were that way. And uh, most of the stuff that uh, was our original work was low impedance out, high impedance in, mostly balanced, a transformer at least at one end of the line so that you could break up ground loops, and lots of headroom. I don't think we ever built anything equipped at less than plus 27 into a 600 ohm load. And you had to be able to drive 600 ohm loads with this stuff because of the legacy equipment that had been accumulating for who knows how many decades prior, and it was still out there. Uh, we had a very interesting time going from tubes t to solid state, and it took about 20 years to get completely out of the impedance-matched world and into the, the voltage-matched systems that we all know now. And one of the nice things about that is you no longer had to be an electrical engineer if you were trying to negotiate a patch bay in a studio because you didn't have to worry about impedance matching and double terminating outputs and making things unhappy.